Last week, I made a video gushing about the new golden generations coming out of both England and the United States. But they aren't the only two countries with a young core of talented players. Real Madrid alone seems to have half of the most talented Brazilians under 23 with the likes of Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, Eder Militao, and now the latest wonderkind, Rainer. And then, did you forget about the defending world champions in France, who have maybe the best young player in the world right now? Holland stands hold? Hold. I said maybe. Maybe. But from top to bottom, the best under 23 French squad might be the most talented of any country in the world. So I thought today, let's go ahead. Let's have some fun. Let's have the best under 23 side from Brazil up against the best under 23 side from France. We're gonna sim a season in crew mode, see which one finishes higher up, but we're mostly gonna be concerned about when we take it to the pitch. 11 on 11, CPU on CPU. And whoever wins that live action match will go on to face the winner of last week's video. If you haven't seen the results of that, no spoilers, please. But if you are excited to see under 23 France take on under 23 Brazil, take your heart direct nipple. Switch the like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the best under 23 team in Brazil. Now the two big names to kind of headline this team, of course, is going to be the two wingers from Real Madrid, Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo. I think Vinny came in for about 50 million and his results have, have been mixed. A lot of people think he's overrated, me included, but I, I also think it's a little bit unfair to get on a 20 year old. You got to think, moving to Real Madrid as a teenager and they expect you to essentially be the next Neymar. And unfortunately, he's looked a little bit more Robinho than... Uh, than Neymar. But that's not to say that he's had quality matches here there. He's had flashes of brilliance and still he is very young. Although Maya, I don't watch Real Madrid all the time, but when I do, honestly, I'd rate Rodrigo kind of higher. Casey, technical, seems to understand the game a little bit better. And if I were to bet on Vinny or Rodrigo having the better career, at this point, I'd probably go Rodrigo. And then up top, you have the highest rated player on this team. And that, of course, is Gabriel Jesus. Now, Gabriel Jesus came on like gangbusters a couple of years ago, but since then, he's kind of fallen out of favor. Despite Man City absolutely cruising to another title, this season. Gabriel Jesus has, has not been great, but he is still very young, barely making the cut at 23 years of age, and he'll be leading the line. And then right now at the camp position, we have David Neres, who's been making waves at Ajax for many years. You know my stance. Usually if you come from Ajax, you're going to turn out relatively good. But the more hype guy that I'm going to put in there right now is this man, Reiner. Who knows how to say this guy's name? Is it Reiner or is it Reiner? I'm going to call him Reiner because I'm an Attack on Titan fan. <laughs> Kind of came out of nowhere, like he had pretty much one good season in the Brazilian League, and then he got snatched up for some absurd amount of money, and now they're labeling the next Kaka. So watch out for this kid. Oh, I apologize. I'm blind. The highest rated player on here is Arthur. Now, very famously, he was over at Barcelona before he kind of mysteriously just transferred over to uh, Juventus. Now, yes, he is 24 years of age, but I, I count 23 and under as they started this season or, or the game FIFA 21 at 23. So let me cheat. Get a couple of good players in here. Come on. I'll be honest. I don't really know uh, too much about this guy, Gamirez, but he has excellent and potential. Loaded Exploded playing over Atletico Madrid. He's earmarked to be, you know, the next great Brazilian left back. Then you got Gabriel, the Arsenal center back. He's got pretty high end potential. You got Eder Militao. Of course, he was a pretty big purchase for Real Madrid. He has high end potential. Same thing with Emerson, the other Emerson at right back. All of them, you know, 85 plus in their potential. And then keeper, there doesn't seem to be a, a young under 23 starlet from that position. So I just found the highest guy that I could. And that was this guy, Carlos Miguel. And then on the bench, you have a couple of other high profile youngsters. You got Richarlson, who's having a fun season over at Everton. He, I mean, he's been good the past two seasons. Anthony, another Brazilian who's over at Ajax. He's doing quite well. You got Luis Felipe, who's a high potential center back. Arton, who looks really promising from the left back position. Arsene Cal, who's a high potential CDM. And even in the reserves, you got Martinelli, who looked fantastic for Arsenal before he got injured. And then you got other promising prospects in Nimeniz, Marcos Antonio, as well as Dodo. Love the name. And you can definitely see in the future for maybe like the next World Cup, you got Neymar out on the left side. Probably Gabriel Jesus up front. Maybe Rodrigo on the right side. Reiner, maybe Maybe if he does really well at the Olympics, he can fit in there, but most likely it's going to be Coutinho with a midfield of probably Casemiro, Arthur, or Fabinho. And then back line, you have so many options. If not Lodi, you have Alexandro, Alex Tellez. Center backs, you go Marquinhos, maybe even play a old man Thiago Silva, or Adam Militao can step up. And then in between the sticks, you got a tough decision, Ederson or Allison. Either way, if this young core can mature, Brazil is going to be fantastic for many World Cups to come. But for now, this under-23 Brazilian side comes out to an attack of 80, a midfield of 80, and a defense of 78. But how does it compare to defending world champion youngsters in France? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's gonna be tough to to beat any team with Mbappe on it. All right, for a long time he was the undisputed best youngster in the world, most promising youngster until Erlen Holland came around. But even then, I think you could very much make an argument that he still is the best young prospect in the world. Already 90 rated in the game, blistering pace of 96, 91 dribbling. And I think he's improved year on year ever since he kind of burst onto the scene over at Monaco. Some people might forget this, but there was a time when people, myself included, rated Osman Dembele higher than Mbappe, and this is back. In in his Dortmund days. He had it all, the tricks, the pace, the technical ability. You can see it to this day, five-star skill moves, five-star weak foot. You know, maybe La Liga's defenders are a lot more challenging than the Bundesliga, as well as having to deal with a lot of injuries throughout his career. His form has very much fluctuated. Although he still is very young, and I would say over the past few seasons, you've seen glimpses of that form that he had over at Dortmund. And then on the left side, you have Mr. Drip himself, Saint Maximi. The Gucci headband comes in at a 79 overall with 87 dribbling and 93 pace. Five-star skill moves, four-star weak foot yeah he's gonna be pretty darn good but they pretty much have an embarrassment of riches over on the wings if you don't want to go him you could actually go Diaby he's actually higher rated he's been killing it for Bayern Leverkusen I believe for the past two seasons when I watch him play he reminds me a lot of in his body movement of Marcus Rashford and then at the camp position you have Nkuku who's uh, been fantastic for RB Leipzig he is very much a dynamic playmaker able to supply passes as well as using his athleticism and dribbling to get past defenders and I just noticed if Real Madrid bet on all the best young Brazilians, then RB Leipzig pretty much bet on all the best young Frenchmen. Because not only is Nkunku on here, you have Mukiele, who's already 80 rated, has high end potential, young French right back. You have Ubamakano, who's probably the most elite youngster defender prospect in the world. And then his center back partner is also on this team, and Konate, who's 78 and super high rated as well. But we're going to go purely highest ratings in the back line. You got another 81 rated center back in Jules Kunde, who's been having a fantastic season for Sevilla, very highly rated, possibly linked to multiple bigger clubs this next summer. They you know, Teo Hernandez at left back coming in at 82 overall blistering pace 92 one of the stronger back lines that we have seen uh, of any of these under 23 squads and then in between the sticks this is easily the best keeper that we're going to see at any of these competitions you got Alvin Lafont he's been highly rated if you're a career boat fan he's pretty much the guy to buy uh, for the past like three years and then you have the two center mids in Ondombele who's been fantastic ever since he's arrived over at Spurs and then we come to Oar who might be the best elite midfielding prospect in the world playing over at Leon who's always been been, you know, a talent factory as well. And, you know, I'm not going to fake like I watch League uh, all the time, but by all accounts, he can do a little bit of everything. Fantastic dribbling, able to handle the press, turn away from pressure, and it probably will not be very long before the big teams come a calling for him. And then even in the substitutes and bench, there's just an embarrassment of high potential youngsters. Zegadao, Ikone, Musa Dembele. Kamara is one of the most highly touted young defenders in the world right now. Kamavinga. Once again, if you play career mode, this man here is the guy to buy. <laughs> At 18 years of age, he just shows a maturity and understanding the game that is far more advanced. Would make him a vital engine piece in pretty much any of the big clubs in Europe, and he is definitely going to play for one of them very soon. Then you have Meisler, who's just like the backup keeper. Gondozi makes it on here. I thought he was like 27. And then you have other high potential youngsters in Indica coming in at 76 and Simicon at 74. And if you're looking how this French team is going to set up in the future, you could easily see Mbappe over on the left. Osman probably going to stay out there on the right, or maybe you play Griezmann there, Benzema up top. Cam position could be in Cuckoo, could be in Onombele, and then the midfield, you got Pogba and Conte. For the back line, it may be Upa Meccano in the future, but you still have the likes of Rafael Varane, as well as uh, Emmerich Laporte. That is, if Emmerich Laporte ever decides to play for France. But even if they don't, they have just so many high-end potential youngsters at the, the center-back position that I'm pretty sure someone will emerge. And then probably Lloris is going to retain the title in between the sticks. He's still fantastic for Spurs. So I think France's chance of repeating his champions are rather decent. But the under-23 French side coming out to an attack of 83, a midfield of 80, and a defense of 81. So definitely a slight advantage for the Frenchman. Although only by a couple of points here or there. Go time with it! And all right, I've taken these two teams and we've simmed a full season in career mode. As you can see, we're all the way at the end of season one, June 1st of 2021. Player stats and okay, Raheem Sterling goes in and wins it. 27 goals. Fantastic from Kevin De Bruyne doing very well. And we don't see any of the youngsters until we get to Mbappe who finished in 10th place with 19 goals, which is not bad. <laughs> And then we scroll further down the list, we have Richarlson coming in 16th place with respectable 14 goals as well. And Awad, the midfielder, coming in with 14 goals. We go over to this and wow, Raheem Sterling, pretty much clean.
clean sweep for him. He wins the golden ball. And we look down at the Brazilians do better than the assist. Uh, David Neres had seven assists for Charleston, had six. And you don't see your first French youngster until Diaby in 15th place with six as well. And if we scroll all the way down to 23rd place, we see Mbappe with five. Wow, Manchester City, clean sweep across everything. I'm pretty sure they won. As for the youngsters, you see that the Frenchmen have Alvin Lafont in 13th place. He had five clean sheets. Oh, and they cheated. They bought the Soria guy who also got four clean sheets. And then Carlos Miguel, the Brazilians, had four clean sheets. So, I mean, looking at the stats, I, I'd have to guess that the French team is going to be higher. All right, I'm starting all the way at the bottom. And uh, yeah, spoiler alert. Brazil and Santos are in 13th place and we don't see PSG anywhere else. So here's a fun little wrinkle. I actually left the all under 23 England team on Liverpool. So this is somewhat a under 23 France versus under 23 England competition right now because Brazil did not do very well in the simulation, but that's to be expected. All right, we're going up Everton 12th, Aston Villa, Wolves. Wow, PSG was in ninth place. Not very good. And okay, <laughs> so at least it was pretty close. Very, very close between the under-23 Englishmen and the under-23 Frenchmen. Although the French had a better goal differential, it's just Liverpool and the, the Englishmen won one more match. But this is all kind of window dressing because what really matters is what happens when we take these two teams 11 on 11 onto the pitch in this all-out under-23 battle. Let's go there now. And here we go for this exhibition of under-23 Brazil versus under-23 France. See Mbappe and Arthur. Arthur doesn't have a real face. You gotta think that this under-23 French side are probably favorites here. They got Mbappe up top. They got the best keeper of any of the under-23 squads I've seen so far. And just a super solid back line. Although this Brazil team, they got a lot of ability up front. Gabriel Jesus, Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo all provide problems and pace. And I opted to start Reiner at the camp position just because if he scores a goal, I, I just want to play more attack on Titan Clips. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the battle of under-23 France versus under-23 Brazil is underway. Gets it up and then Diaby onto Nkuku. Mbappe trying to run the channel. OR, good hold up play from him. But Eden, what a rolls his defender. Mbappe is in. Oh my goodness. Oh, Mbappe. <laughs> really? Seven minutes in. And pretty much the first counterattack from the under 23 French results in a goal right here. But they just ping it around and look at this. Turns who is that? Eder Militao? And also their keeper's like 68 rated as opposed to Lafont who's 78 rated. And let's be honest, almost any keeper in the game can't stop killing Mbappe. He's the cover athlete, he's overpowered. Undombele, excellent shielding of the ball in the middle of the park. Over to Ouar. got runners ahead of him. Gives it to Diabe. Ouar back heel, doing Cuckoo! Oh my goodness, just that close man. Could have easily been 2-0. Brazil have to do something to try to find a foothold because they are under attack. Not great here. But now Reiner, what can he do? Gabriel Jesus, he spotted over the top. Oh, Rodrigo off of the post. That would have been an electric goal from Brazil. But alas, denied by the woodwork. And Cuckoo, been fantastic so far. It's gonna, oh, Kamavinga's not even playing, my bad. Ondombele is in here. Gonna dim. Mbappe. He, oh my god, he turned him. Oh, he is just abusing Gabriel. It is not fair. Mbappe. <laughs> Look at how smug he is. Oh, just watch this man. He's going out for Chinese because he is using Gabriel like a lazy Susan. Just spin him in circles. Oh, he's hugging his hip, cuddling, spooning him. But Mbappe telling Gabriel, no, no, I am the big spoon. Two goals for the Ninja Turtle, and he's on a hat trick. It's only 36 minutes. This is under 23, but I don't know if I've seen a more dominant performance by a singular player in any of these experiments so far this year. Gabriel Jesus dropping a little bit deeper. So over to Arthur, over to Reiner. He can give it back here if he wants to. He does, threads it through, but Teo, just too much pace. And now we avoid the danger, and we're gonna go into halftime. Up 2-0. Listen, it's a it's a, it's a big task. <laughs> it's a big ass of Brazil, but they did come, you know, literally inches close to equalizing in that first half. So maybe something can happen. I've seen weirder things. I do watch hentai, so facts. For Charleston, fresh legs. We're gonna get anything going. Reiner driving forward. Over to Arthur. Oh, Gumerez. He's inside, finds a bit of space. Oh, and Alvin Lafont. Gets that. I don't know if it was going wide, but he was making sure. <laughs> Better safe than sorry here. And, oh, that's a great save. That is a great save. But all right, Brazil pretty much needs this. That's a, oh my God. I thought that was a free header. But Upa Meccano did just enough to get the Brazilian player off. And now <laughs> it's a foot race. Mbappe, he could turn inside and no one is going to catch him here, are they? He's in, he's through. 
and it is complete. Game, set, match. And the youngster telling Erlen Holland, just wait one sec, just wait, give me a little spotlight at the top of the line, see, at least for the youngsters. Brazil committing plenty of men forward, trying to get something late in the match, and you always knew Mbappe, once he turned inside, no one was gonna catch up to him. Blistering pace, and one-on-one -on -one with the keeps, done. Done and dusted. And that is gonna wrap it up, folks. After the, the second goal, really, it was it was over in the 36th minute. This man, just too good, too dominant. A Thanos among boys today. Just snapping defenders out of existence. But I, I think I should mention, it was a pretty dominant performance all around. Defensively, they were never really all that troubled except for that one lightning quick counterattack from Brazil. And yeah, Mbappe using Gabriel like a $2 hooker. Just unspeakable things. But now I am excited because the two teams that are gonna be facing off next week, spoiler, spoiler, if you don't wanna see, but it's gonna be under 23 England versus under 23 France. But uh, you'll have to tune in next week to find out where we crown the champions of the under 23 unofficial World Cup that I'm doing, I guess. I'd like to take this opportunity to go ahead and thank all of my patrons, by the way, who are keeping the lights on, keeping me alive during the global pandemic. I cannot say thanks to you guys enough. Thank you guys so much. If you wanna check out last week's video, go ahead and click over here, Dinksy Poos, or if you wanna check out a kind of different little something from me, go ahead and click over here. And yeah, this is gonna be it for me, B-minus. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Remember, stay yourself, stay humble. Until next time, boys, stay thick.